Today, a human being rapidly wanders off the path which in reality made him human. The search for ultimate truth and justice, the only goal which deserves to be the grand purpose of his existence. People easily and carelessly trade truth and justice for petty and transient pleasures of the moment. Due to the knowledge discovered and accumulated by great minds of the past, the creation's most intricate secrets unveil themselves to the mankind. However, we do not seem to recognize and appreciate them, readily passing by them in pursuit of bare necessities. Alas, great wisdoms lost their true meaning and became prejudices which hold our spirits in captivity no less than they did during the Dark Ages. This film was prepared by independent researchers, philosophers, theologians, linguists, and mathematicians. This work is an attempt to understand a significant yet not as widely acclaimed scientific discovery, a mysterious encoding of the Quran, the book which claims to have supernatural origin. The book, highly discredited by recent historical events, will appear before you from its unknown, possibly even shock inside. For the next half hour, put all your stereotypes aside, and perhaps one of the universe's greatest mysteries shall be revealed to you, brilliantly beautiful in its simplicity. To find truth, we have to define knowledge first. What and how can we know? Every one of us has all necessary resources to find answers to these questions through senses, reason, and time, all life. Truth, knowledge, meaning, essence, existence, actuality, reality, being. Every one of us understands or at least senses what is at stake here when he or she hears these words. But what is behind all these notions? Do they possess a tangible basis? What is truth and how do we find it? Should we even bother to look? The first human who showed that truth can only be known through reason was Socrates, who equated good with knowledge and evil with ignorance. This became the first ethical system in history and identified humans as beings who need knowledge no less than air, water, and food. From this moment on, in order to be a human, one was required to think independently and love truth. The first definition of man was given by Plato, a student of Socrates who started that humans are featherless, bipedal animals with broad nails, receptive to knowledge based on reasoning. Thus defining the human, Plato applied his mind to the theory of truth. This famous Greek discovered that human thinking is essentially conceptual and idealistic. This cleansed the human mind from the corrupting power of prejudices and traditions and cleared the path towards the truth. This laid the foundations for truth revolution of reason. According to great thinkers, the search for truth makes our existence meaningful. We carry all the necessary tools for such task. Abilities to sense and reason. Plato's pupil Aristotle discovered the laws of thinking, formal logic. Famous formula inferred by Decker, I think, therefore I am proved that every human is capable to independently find firm and confident knowledge. What drove these people to search for ultimate truth? Go against many, sacrifice wealth, friends, and even their own lives? The answer is simple, God. In their quest, philosophers discover a rational confirmation of God's existence. Truth meant good, then knowledge, and eventually was equal to God. The innate idea of God became a spark discovered by great thinkers within themselves. The spark became flame that illuminated the history of mankind. 
всю историю человечества. Centuries had passed as philosophers continued to search for universal criteria for truth. In the end, such criteria was found. It was mathematics, logic's younger sister. Basis of both math and logic is order and proportion. Discovery of order enables us to see patterns and predict the development of things and events. Elegant beauty and credibility of mathematics enlightened, gave confidence and led to the emergence of modern science. Today, science faces humanity's greatest question, the question of God, and mathematics helped to raise this question. Theory of Big Bang, which is today's standard and widely accepted framework for understanding the origins of our universe, was developed primarily by mathematical means. According to this theory, the universe appeared from the point of zero volume and infinite mass, in other words, from nothing. The Big Bang Theory destroyed the barriers between science, religion and philosophy and added credibility to the traditional proofs of God's existence. In the process of measuring and examining this world, science raised questions that it was unable to answer. First, it was discovered that the universe had a beginning. In other words, there was a time when there was no time, as well as no matter, no energy, and no space. In other words, the world began or was created from nothing. Who created our world? Then it became clear that the laws of physics are tuned and established with such precision and perfection that it is impossible to explain their existence simply by coincidence. Who established and calculated the laws of physics? Finally, it is now evident that our innate capabilities to understand the laws of nature are amazingly well adjusted to these laws. Why do we have the ability to know? Scientific data indicates that the same cause initiated both cosmos and man. It is exactly the search for the single and universal cause of all things that inspired philosophers and scientists of all ages to make discoveries and look for truth. Behind philosophical and scientific findings lies a simple amazement before the grandeur and complexity of ordering things and events of our world. The greatest minds were convinced that observable order and unity underlying our world can only be explained through the existence of a single creator. And if the greatest of us were right, indeed, then such God would not leave us without his attention and will establish a link with mankind, favoring the efforts of the best of men who devoted and sacrificed so much studying his creation and searching for himself. We would like to present to you something both striking and curious. We call it the primary proof, the sign, the miracle. We speak of a physical object existing in reality, of an old book written more than a thousand years ago. It is a book which contains a blend of brilliant poetry, deep prose, coherent philosophical and ethical system, scientific phenomena, and mathematical symmetries. This book contains ultimate answers to all major questions. Profoundness and integrity of these answers are capable of filling the soul of the seeker of truth with a sense of enthusiastic satisfaction from the attained goal. And the answer to the question of God will undoubtedly be the most important. The book convincingly verifies the existence of God and at the same time completely reveals his will. This concrete evidence is the mathematical code encrypted within the text. The book carries a complex mathematical structure based on proportions, symmetries, sequences, and numerical values of letters, words, sentences, and chapters. The creation of such structure is unthinkable without the application of advanced computing technology, especially considering the age of the writing. This book is the Quran.
In direct awe before the might of God, thinkers attempted to understand his creation with the help of their reason. Exploring the world in search of divine traces, they achieved much and built the world we live in. The activity of these people led to revolutionary changes in lifestyle, way of thought, and colossal accomplishments in the fields of science and technology. However, the simple accumulation of knowledge wasn't the goal of the geniuses. The main objective was to find logical, convincing, and verifiable evidence of God's existence. Philosophers and scientists passionately searching for truth live also in our age. The mathematical code of the Quran was discovered in 1974 by an American scientist, Rashad Khalifa, who attempted to uncover Quran's most important secret, mysterious sets of letters appearing in the beginning of 29 chapters. Traditional techniques proved to be unsuccessful. Rashad Khalifa decided to program the Quranic text into digital language and load it into a computer. This proved to be a wise decision since its consequences led to the great scientific discovery. The numerical code of enormous complexity was found in the Arabic text of the Quran. Mathematical structure built around a single factor, number 19. The discovery of mathematical phenomena in the Quran shook the Muslim world. For the first time in history, a physical evidence of the divine origin of the scripture was discovered. Let us repeat the experimental steps took by Dr. Khalifa in order to witness the miracle for ourselves. To see the mathematical structure of the Quran, we use Abjad, an original system of numeration by letters of Arabic alphabet. Arabic alphabet consists of 28 letters and is ideally suited for decimal numeration system. Every letter has its numerical value, from 1 to 9, from 10 to 90, from 100 to 900, and 1000. The numerical value of a word is constituted by some value of its letters. The numerical value of an Arabic word, Allah, God, will equal to the sum of its four letters. Alif, 1. Lam, 30. Lam, 30. Ha, 5. Together, 66. Armed with this information, we can now easily calculate numerical values of each word, verse, and chapter in the Quran. Let's begin with Basmallah, a first verse of the book which is found exactly 114 times in the Quran. Basmallah is the most frequent verse in the Quran. It sounds like this, Bismillah rahman rahim in the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. Bismillah is a perfect example to reveal the mathematical phenomena. Bismillah has 19 letters. It is easy to count even if you do not know Arabic. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. These are numerical values of each letter. By adding their values together, we can determine the values of each word and total value of all words. Their value, 102, 66, 329, and 289. Total numerical value of all words, 786. Bismillah has four words. 19 letters, total numerical value of Bismillah is 786. This six-digit number is divisible by 19 without a remainder. Let's rewrite the sequence number of each word in Bismillah and after it number of letters in each word. This whole sequence is an eight-digit number divisible by 19. If we add the number of letters in each word to the number of letters in the next word, we will get a 10-digit number divisible by 19. If we add the numerical value of each word to the number of letters in this word, we will get a 15-digit number divisible by 19. 
If we add the numerical value of each word to the numerical value of the next word, we will get a 16-digit number divisible by 19. If we write the number of letters in the word, then the numerical value of each letter in this word separately, then the numerical value of each word, we will get a 48-digit number divisible by 19. If we write after the numerical value of each letter its sequence number in Bismillah from 1 to 19, we will get a 62-digit number divisible by 19. The miracle of Bismillah is not limited to simple math and divisibility by 19. No less interesting are proportions between numerical values and lexical meanings of words comprising Bismillah and other attributes of God mentioned in the Quran. Four words comprising Bismillah are found in the Quran. Name, 19 times. God, 2,698 times. Most gracious, 57 times. Most merciful, 114 times. All numbers are divisible by 19, and the addition of the quotients produces 152, which turns out to also be divisible by 19 without a remainder. Out of 115 attributes of God mentioned in the Quran, there are only four names whose numerical values correspond with the numbers mentioned above. These are Wahid, 1, Zul Fadl Ilazim, Possessor of Highest Grace, Majid, Glorious, Jami, Gatherer. They correspond with only three names. There is an incomplete symmetry. The word ism, name, is not a name, so it would be logical to suppose that there is a divine name which is found exactly 19 times in the Quran, which will be correspond to the numerical value of the divine attribute Wahid. 19. Remarkable is the fact that out of 115 divine attributes dispersed throughout the whole Quran, there's only one name which is repeated exactly 19 times, Shaheed, Witness. Thus, we have a perfect symmetrical system of interrelated divine attributes. All mentioned numerical meanings are divisible by 19. These words are easily combined into a single sentence. God is witness that He is one, possessor of the highest grace, glorious, most gracious, most merciful, gatherer of people on the day of judgment. it all seems as some sort of manipulation and trick. Skepticism in this case is quite appropriate and reflects a sound mind. It is possible to create patterns in words, even sentences, adjusting their values accordingly. This will take lots of time and mathematical skills. History knows of such examples. However, to do such task with the whole book, literary masterpiece, historical document, religious and philosophical scripture, ethical code, and judicial compendium is unreal. Colossal complexity of such task is unimaginable. Human intellect, especially in the seventh century, is simply not fit for such task. It would take supercomputer technologies to calculate data of such magnitude. It is not without reason that Quran challenges humanity to produce a book like this. Or do they say, he invented it? Say, bring ten invented chapters like it, and call it on whom you can besides God if you're truthful. So far, the challenge has not been accepted, and no one has been able to refute the mathematical miracle of the Quran. Will you dare? Hey, 
the mathematical miracle guarantees the safety of the scripture, there remains as a long-awaited, indisputable confirmation of the extraterrestrial origin of the Quran. Verse 30 of the 74th chapter says the following. On it is 19. Traditionalists say that it is about the day of judgment when God and angels will tempt, mislead, and guide people, and disbelievers will question God. This understanding is based on neglectful and inconsistent reading of the Quranic text, since it is impossible to imagine that at the final judgment God would have to mislead somebody and somebody would question God. What did God mean by this example? No. The day of final judgment is an event persuasive enough for everybody to be free of doubts about religion, scripture, or God's existence. Also, it is clear that it is not angels themselves, but their number, which is made as a test for disbelievers. So what exactly does Quran say about number 19? The Quran pays special attention to the number 19, which is meant to persuade the people of the scripture, reinforce faith of the believers, and guide them to the straight path as well as to expose hypocrites and disbelievers and leave them in a state of misguidance. All of this must occur in this life, before the Day of Judgment. But why 19 and not 3, 5 or 100? Perhaps only in time we will understand the true purpose of the number 19 in the Quran. Nonetheless, it is safe to say that the number 19 proves the supernatural origins of the Quran and serves as the key which opens the door to a miracle. Do you want more of mathematical facts, this time without complex calculations? Okay, only proven and verified facts. By the even and the odd, says verse 3 of chapter 89, attracting our attention to the possibility of an experiment. The Quran, it contains 114 chapters. Every chapter contains a certain amount of verses. The total sum of the 114 sequence numbers is 6,555. The total amount of numbered Quranic verses is 6,234. 114 chapters of the Quran. Half of them odd sequence numbers, half even. Let's organize chapters according to the evenness and the oddness of their quantity of verses and sequence numbers. We're left with four categories. The category of two odds is a category where the sequence number and the quantity of verses are both odd. The two even category is where the sequence number and the quantity of verses are both even. The even odd category is where the sequence number and the quantity of verses are even and odd respectively. And finally, odd even category is where everything is exactly the opposite. Now let's combine categories into groups. Here we have chapters where the sequence numbers and the quantity of verses match by evens or odds. And in the other group there are chapters where the sequence number and the quantity of verses do not match by evens and odds. Truly astonishing are the following facts. In both groups, the distribution and the number of surahs are not only symmetrical, but also equal. While the sums of the surah numbers and the number of ayahs in the respective groups are equal to the sums of the same factors throughout the whole Quran. Clearly, before us is a perfect harmony, symmetry and beauty. Code 19 is present not only in the first verse of the Quran, but literally it runs to the whole first surah, Al-Fazihah. The first surah consists of seven verses. Let us write down order number of each verse, number of words in each verse, number of letters in each verse, numerical value of each verse. Total number of words in the whole surah, 29. The number of letters in the whole surah, 139. Numerical value of all words in the surah, 10,143. Now let us represent available sequences as numbers which are divisible by 19.
In the end, we get 10 patterns divisible by 19. So far, we have witnessed how Code 19 works with the first verse in the first chapter of the Quran. Creation of such complex system, according to our view, far transcends the boundaries of human abilities and points to the supernatural origin of the book. Mathematical code also safeguards Bismillah and Fatiha. First verse and first chapter are clearly preserved from distortions. If it wasn't so, the code simply would not work. Is there a similar code in the whole text of the book? Yes, the structure of the Quran is mathematically regulated and follows the same pattern. Code 19 protects the whole scripture. Unfortunately, time limits do not allow us to show all examples of big numbers, and we will only show two of them. If we represent the Quran as a sequence of chapter numbers, verse numbers, and their sums, we'll get the following numbers. First, let's write the verse sequence numbers in chapters. Let's write total sum of verse numbers in this chapter. First chapter will look like this. The whole number will look like this. Let's try a different pattern. If we put the total sum of verse numbers before verse sequence numbers, we'll get the following number. The code also works with this pattern. All these colossal numbers are divisible by 19. You can find many different patterns and sequences on our websites. In this film, we presented evidence that the Quran is not an ordinary book. Facts in the Quran deserve attention and individual testing. To do this, you do not need special skills or complex technology. All that is needed is a simple computer and a few hours to spare. The difficult part will be to look at things from a new perspective, if in the process it turns out that the world no longer fits in an old framework. Science and mathematics prove that the Quran is supernatural in origin and leave the one who witnessed it one-on-one -on -one with the book which contains answers to life's most important questions.